We still play PS1 in 2024. Here's why. I'm Scott. I'm Jen. We're Retro Rivals and we still love the PS1. Yeah. And we're going to name off all the games we love. Yes. Maybe you'll love them too. If you haven't played them, you can maybe you want to try them. Yeah. So we did a video where we had a little bit of a disagreement between modern and retro. And PS1 is your favorite console. It has it risen like, in the ranks. It has risen in the ranks throughout the years. For, and it's it's the games. That You'll make, see why. It's the games that yes. makes the console. It, it absolutely yeah. is. It's not the hardware or whatever. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it has something to do with it there, but it's always the games. Yeah, and I and PS1 is a fantastic console. We each have six-ish games, kind of, and uh, that we're going to talk about. Do you want to go first? Or do you uh, I go think first? I'm going to let you go first. Oh, ladies first. I thought we were oh, going to go first. I thought we were going to go age before beauty, but whatever. Your age. You're, oh. What? Were you going to call me age? Oh, no. No, you wouldn't do that. First game yet you have on the list, yes. and you're going to see a heavy theme for Jen, mm -hmm. is Clock Tower. Yes, good old Scissor Man action. You'll notice that this isn't the legit artwork. No, it's not the legit artwork, which is fine. It's fine. I mean, if, you know, of course, as collectors, we're like, oh, it would be really cool to have it. Yes. But this was a gift. The, the disc was a, di a gift from another YouTube channel. Yes. So. Shout out to Tom and Lacey from Do You Nerd. I loved it so much that as soon as Limited Run said, oh, we're putting out a Clock Tower Rewind, which is the SNES, the prequel to this. Did you order it yet? I haven't ordered it yet. I have till the end of this month. I'm <laughs> actually, I was waiting till payday, which was yesterday. And so I'm picking it up today as we're recording this video. I'll be doing that right afterwards. But I loved this game so much. And the title character's name is Jennifer. So I mean, what's not to love? I have to have that one too. Clock Tower was a very unexpected game. And the tension in it was more than I thought it would be. You're like being chased by Scissor Man the entire time and you can't do anything to stop him because there's no fighting back. You just have to run and you have to hide and then you have to f puzzle your way through the game. It's really, really cool. I go. Yes. Can't even remember how I put these in order, but I do see the first one, and I will say correctly this time, Sui Coden. Yes. I know you guys are giving me crap in the comments, but it's not my fault. It's other YouTubers are saying yes. it wrong too. Yeah. Sui Coden. This is. Uh, or. Sui Coden. Yeah, we've heard people say uh, it that like way Like that's people making mixing it up. Okay. Sui Coden. Yes. Is uh. The best thing about this game for me, because I really wasn't that into the story, but I did enjoy going and getting all the stars. Yeah, 108 stars. You have to go get them all. Like you, and there's some of them there that you just you wouldn't know unless you went and looked in a walkthrough or whatever. Yeah. What I did, I got as many as I could, and before I got too far in the story, I actually printed off a list of every star, you know, all the characters' names. Yes, and when we and say it star, you, we're not talking the no, shape. No, no, it's... We're talking it's a, heroes in the game. Yeah, so it's, um, for that whole list, and beside it would say how you obtain it. Yeah. How you, how you got that guy. And then I went and I went through the rest of the game, did everything I had to do, and I got all the stars. And the importance of that is... Well, I guess it changes your ending. And do you not and carry if, over? And then you carry over your save into uh, Suicoden 2. Mm -hmm. Now, in my last big battle, I lost one guy. And apparently that's going to affect... I'm not going to get the best ending. I had somebody tell me that. And I'm like, I don't know if I care enough. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go back and replay it, but I don't care enough. Like, I, I got what I got and I enjoyed what I got. So I'm going to continue on with the story with what I have. Yes. I'm not going to talk too long about that because we do have a little stack of games. We do. 
your next one is a kind of a bundle. It is. Because it's two party games. It is, and it's not, like, it would be very unexpected for things I talk about. But... You don't know Jack, Jen. And you don't know Jack yeah. Moth 2. Whoa. Yeah. So I actually got my start playing You Don't Know Jack on PC. I was playing this and Acrophobia at the same time. And You Don't Know Jack is kind of a not very PC, almost adult-themed trivia game. Say hello to... Get that dwarf a breath mint! And you're playing for $3,000 cash money. Hey, even a fair maiden has to be on the lookout for simple chronic halitosis. Because he doesn't receive a farewell kiss in the final scene of Snow White, which one of the seven dwarves might you assume has a problem with bad breath? Sleepy, sneezy, Doc, or Dopey? No, Doc gets a kiss. I mean, you never know how that prince is going to work out. Snow White has to keep her options open. Should have picked this. Snow White kisses every dwarf but Sleepy in the final farewell scene, which shows a lot of gall on Snow White's part. I mean, as far as I can tell, she didn't brush her teeth after that death nap she took. My brother and I used to play this on our PC at home. I, I got our first PC when I was 16, and it was all dial-up. I don't know if I've ever played it. I know. Artists. We also have a You Don't Know Jack on Xbox 360, so yes. that might be the way to play it. That might be the but way to do it. I love the crap out of this, and it was really, really funny. And the host of the game now is hilarious. Now your TV talks back. Now your TV talks <laughs> back. The host of the game is hilarious. I, I love these, and it, it gives me a lot of nostalgia. But if you want a great party game... That's, that's a good one. Ooh, next on my list, it's gonna be a game that we both enjoy. Yes. And it, honestly, it's gotta be one of the best soundtracks on the entire system. Uh, it, if it not one of my favorite soundtracks ever. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Are you guys getting tired of hearing us talk I'm, about this We're yet? not gonna talk a lot about yeah. it because I hope that a lot of the, you know, people have seen other videos and I hope if you're new to the channel you'll go back and watch some of our older videos and you'll see us talk a lot about this yeah. and how much we do enjoy it. Uh, graphically still holds up really cool. Oh my very, god. Very very good. The music is amazing. Gameplay is phenomenal. Uh, it made me a Metroidvania fan. It made you a Metroidvania fan. I, I am like hardcore yeah. now. Alright, next on Jen's list is Resident Evil. The very oh, first one. Boy, oh boy. I have not played through this game completely <laughs> because of the controls. Am I right? It's a little difficult. It, it, it's difficult and there's some spiking difficulty at the first that's just... It, it gets me every time and I've tried a couple times. I just, I think I just need to push through that and get past that point and get into the game because I love Resident Evil. I've played most of them. Most of them. This is the, this, I can't say One I've of played very all, few. yeah, but there's only a few that I haven't played. Yeah. You know. I, as cheesy as the first of this one is, I love it. <laughs> and... I mean, that's where the game got its start. I still think this is an important game to play through, even though it has its flaws. So, Resident Evil, this is actually the director's cut. But yeah, Resident Evil, the first one, I think it's a must-play on the PS1. One of the first driving games that kind of blew me away was on the PS1. And people tell us all the time, we never talk about driving games? Well, here you go. Driver. Driver. I remember the mechanics in this, which is, I was like, what? This is freaking up. Yeah. It's so cool how it drives. But I do remember how difficult it was to get started up. I don't know what it was to get into the campaign or whatever, but you had to do like a driving test kind of oh, thing. Oh, yeah. For, yeah. And everybody says the same thing. It's just like, oh my God. But then once you get through that part. It's a really know. good game. It's, well, I don't know how well it holds uh, up. For PS1. Well, yes. This is what I'm saying. Like, I just, I thought it was awesome that your car takes damage. Yeah. You know, it's just the mechanics of how you drive. It really, yeah. really impressed me back then. Yeah. Yours? Yes. Silent Hill number one. Yeah. I... You've talked about this a few times. I, 
I love Resident Evil probably a little bit more than Silent Hill, but Silent Hill, that fog is something that was very unexpected. Like, I, back in the PS1 era of gaming, when that first happened, you were like, oh my god, this really sets the atmosphere. The voice acting, everything about the game was very intriguing and it was creepy. I, that's what I'm constantly caught off guard by when I play PlayStation, when I play PS1. They did a great job setting the atmosphere. Is how great a job they did setting the atmosphere yeah. with how little they had to work with. Yeah, like nowadays it's all graphics frame rate. Right? Yes. Really. Yes, but this game blew me away and it creeped me out at the same time and I really, really love it. I'm starting to play through all the Silent Hills as well. I've got Silent Hill 1, 2, 3 off the uh, oh. board and Shattered uh, Memories. So it's it's a series I want to play all the way through, but I think you definitely, absolutely start here. One of my favorite, I don't know if it is my favorite, but it has a lot of sentimental value. I've mentioned it a million times on this channel, yes. so I'm not going to talk too long about it. But it's Parasite Eve. Yeah. It's a cinematic RPG, survival horror. A Christmas game. Love, love. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of. It happened, takes place in Christmas. Yeah. Uh, it's really different mechanics. The battle mechanics. Yeah. It's, ki it's kind of turn based. But mm -hmm. the, the, I dressed up as A. Abrea one year for Halloween. You did. I did. It's, so. It's a game that means a lot to you. I for... recommend this to everybody, but I. Don't know how well it holds up. The cinematics hold up pretty well. Yeah. The graphics during your gameplay may not be there, you know. But I think it's if you still like worth playing for PS PS One, it's still very worth playing. Oh yeah, and we need a remake. We yeah. I was just about to say that. Absolutely yeah. need a remake. And here, Jen's got one that's not a survival horror game, but has had a remake. Final Fantasy VII. Yes. Final Fantasy VII, Jen. I, know. I remember when you fought. I remember when you played it. You got stuck. You were like at the verge of quitting. Yeah. And I told you, Jen, it's just a. Gr you gotta grind out a little bit. You just gotta grind. Oh, I was power done. Up. I was done with this <laughs> game because I got to the end and couldn't get past the first boss. And there's two bosses, and there's two just or three forms I, in the in the last boss, and I got hammered. Yep. So, what I did was go back to the battle arena and get certain items I needed to have to get to the end. And it meant a lot of backtracking and an entire extra night or two of gaming. Oh, at least. And you filmed the ending, the ending of this of game. I'm sure we still have that, but I know it was, we you it. were all choked up. I, I was you like finally beat the game. near tears. So I've got video proof here now of you actually beating I know. a retro Final game. Final Fantasy I know. 7. I and, other retro games. And your uh -oh. first What's going RPG. Turn-based RPG. But... No, he's not going to let her drop. Oh, I thought he was going to let her drop. Like, you <laughs> better do a one arm pull up like it's your... Well, support yourself with your boobs. Did you see her? She flopped up on the ledge and she's like, I got it. Well, I did shut it off for a minute or two. <laughs> you got credit for all now, Jen. You did it! Final Fantasy Seven. How many yeah. hours? Done. How many hours you get into that, Jen? Oh my god! I think you had Double. fifty-two hours when you started it tonight. I was sorry, what fifty-five? I no, I'm say... probably closer to like. Well, yeah. 57, 50. Well, yeah, but there was a lot of times that the time was just running. She, and we there was a time thing. where she lost a chunk of progress too. That doesn't that count I'm to probably, your time. You're probably pushing sixty hours. I probably doubled the amount of time it should have taken me to do it. Yeah, it's an accomplishment, right? It is. Like, I, I feel like the remake's going to have a hard time to compete because I'm assuming. That'll be a lot more forgiving save-wise. Very much. Dennis? 
Dennis Why is teary eyed. I can't He's remember. So emotional. I'm so t- <laughs> He's so emotional. I'm so emotional. I can't believe Jen beat the game. A lot of people would consider this their favorite RPG yeah, of all time. I get that. Yeah. I totally get it. Had I played it back in the day, I could totally see that. It's it's an amazing game. Uh, I also have another RPG. Surprise, surprise. But it was a friend, a gift from another fellow YouTuber, and a friend, uh, Mondane. Anyway, well, I played this game and I absolutely loved it from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Fantastic story. Good gameplay. Really good, really good gameplay. I shouldn't just say good gameplay, but really good gameplay. Yeah. Like the mechanics of it, the story. I know there's, there's nothing. I I had no complaints, and I was at when I was at the end of this game. It was one of those games you didn't want to finish it. So then I would go and mess around and do some grinding or something because I didn't want it to finish it. So I'm like, it's on a Tuesday or something like that. And I was like, well, I'll finish it on the weekend when I have more time. Yeah. Really get to enjoy it instead of kind of rushing through it through the week before I go to work. Most yeah. most RPGs are feel-good games, but this yeah. one just was a little bit more, I think. Yeah, it was always like a happy theme big adventure yeah you know the heroes like kind of like like a kid almost like young young man growing up yeah yeah you have one more i have one more yeah. obviously yours is horror theme horror theme yes this is one of my favorites on the ps1 also yes and when we say we have resident evil 2, two. Probably prefer this one a little bit over the remake. It depends on the day. Honestly, mm-hmm. both are great. I remember that scene in the sewers when you're being chased, and I felt this absolute terror trying to get away from that. It's just such a great game. I have so many great memories of Resident Evil. I, I think Are they all four... kind of mi- mixed up together, maybe? No, 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 no they're very distinctive. Yeah. I think 4 is still my favorite, and 7 is, like, right there, too. But 2 would be next. 2 is a fantastic game. And I think if you haven't played it on the PS1, you need to. This... And if you don't have a PS1, you could play the remake, but I really think it benefits playing this one first. It's the first Resident Evil game I ever yeah. played through. And I actually played through it on my Vita. And there's two different campaigns you can play yeah. in this, too. So, play both campaigns. Yep. I think it's worth playing. There's a lot of replay value here. Last one on my list is a banger. Mm-hmm. It is really cool. Uh, Lunar Silver Star Story Complete. That was mouthful, and you said it. <laughs> and I said it. Uh, I think all the animated cutscenes are, like... And the voice acting and stuff like that is what really sets oh, it apart. Oh, you wouldn't from, expect that. Yeah, like the artwork of it, like the music's really good. It's a really cool story. I thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish. So much so that I made her make me a painting. Yeah. And we got it on the door in there. <laughs> it's, it's probably my, like, as much as I love yeah. Super Metroid behind us, I think the lunar painting might be my favorite. And I spent so much time with those characters when I was painting it, obviously that I kind of want to play the game now. Oh, you Like, you've recommended me Skies of Arcadia, and I loved it. it. So if you're talking so passionately about this, I think I need to play Lunar as well. And I haven't played the second one yet, so... No. I would love to know, what are the games that you guys are still playing on the PS1 in 2024, and what would you recommend? We have... A lot of PS1 games over there that we still haven't played yet. We I want a, to play. I have a ton of hours worth of RPGs mm-hmm. that I've I've acquired that I that are in the backlog. Yes, and yeah. I have some horror games over there that are still sitting there being unplayed. Yeah. So what would you suggest we play next? <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you guys want to do a VR response to this, you know, great. If you want to put in the comments, what are games you think should be played on the PS1 in 2024 that you're still playing? We would love to know. And with that being said, until next time, game on.